this town. Yeah, and go where? Where are we gonna go? I'll tell you where. Someplace warm. Initially, we had intended to go to Yellowstone, and I had actually reserved reservations back in February. However, our plans suddenly changed when one day I woke up and due to COVID, our reservations had been refunded into my bank account. So we decided to pick another spot and ended up choosing going to Arizona. Now, it worked out a little funny because Sydney's work schedule required that I would leave a little bit early to make it down there. So I actually ended up driving the RV by myself down to Flagstaff, Arizona, which turned out to be wonderful because I could spend some time with the family and hang out for a week, getting the old motor home even more ready for our trip up. On our first day, we stopped at Lee's Ferry. It was absolutely beautiful, and then made our way up to Lake Powell. Now, Lake Powell has got to be one of my favorite places in the entire world. I'm not just saying that because of two million years of flash floods making this the second largest man-made lake in the whole United States. The only lake bigger than Lake Powell is Lake Mead, which yes, does hold more water, but geographically, Lake Powell is much bigger. The dam was built in 1966 and backs up to 186 miles of the Colorado River. It fills 96 canyons and has roughly 2,000 miles of shoreline. Now that's more than the entire west coast of the United States. We had a great time and it really brought me back to my childhood. Growing up, I remember spending almost every other weekend on this lake, catching striped bass. Stripers get so big in this lake. The record striper is 48 pounds, 11 ounces. That's almost 50 pounds for one fish. I used to catch them on anchovies and I will say that near the dam is the best place to catch them. We had such an amazing time with these inflatable kayaks. I will mention though that we did get to the other side of the lake and the wind picked up and I honestly didn't know if we would get back. I was worried we would have to flag down a boat just because the wind was so intense and the water was so rough. Fortunately, we made off much better than most of these people as they actually did need to get a boat to get back across the lake. I had done New Mexico, we met in Arizona, and now we were beginning our way up into Utah. Now, I will say that Utah really is an underrated state. Every time I go there, I see a lot less people, and it is absolutely beautiful. We're not gonna make it. This is right outside of Bryce Canyon National Park, which is one of five national parks in Utah. It was settled by Mormon pioneers in the 1850s and named after Ebenezer Bryce. This holds the largest collections of hoodoos in the world. And I will say, I actually didn't know what a hoodoo was until I got there. It reminded me of a word that you would find in a book from Dr. Seuss. But a hoodoo is actually somewhat like an arch. However, the only difference is that the top has fallen off, leaving this really remarkable landscape. You could see hundreds of these out in the distance, and it was just beautiful to sit there and stare at. I really wish I would have had a better stabilizer on my camera for this trip, because as you can see, a lot of this footage is just really, really shaky. Bryce Canyon was a super awesome place to have lunch, and then we were back on the road up to stop at a little waterfall hike. 
This was Lower Calf Falls and it was kind of funny because we actually got stuck on the road going in. Very narrow and had to back up the entire way but the hike itself was just absolutely gorgeous. Really wasn't that hard, only about three miles but not too much elevation gain. It was pretty flat and easy to do and definitely well worth it. Once you get to the end there's a ginormous waterfall which I believe was spring fed so it didn't depend too much on the rainwater. It was all year round flowing and just absolutely gorgeous. If you're in the area of Escalante, I really recommend stopping by this waterfall. It was definitely a huge highlight to our trip. We had the entire waterfall to ourselves for a long time. It was an awesome place to just sit down, have some snacks before we headed back on the hike. And man, there's nothing more relaxing than just sitting at the bottom of a ginormous waterfall. The next really cool spot we ended up driving to was Bullfrog. This is the northern part of Lake Powell before we were on the southern part. Now we're at the very top of the lake, right where the river flows in and starts filling up the lake. It just absolutely gorgeous drive. Although it was pretty windy, so we didn't really get to spend that much time kayaking like we had planned. Most of the day we just spent inside the motorhome, playing games, having fun. There was a small brief section where the wind died enough we could get in the water and really enjoy ourselves. It was still really hot. They have really great bathrooms which made it really nice and you can really get very primitive right on the water. A lot of these trails would be awesome in a Jeep. We were kind of confined to doing what the motorhome could actually <laughs> cover as far as the dirt road went, but there were just some really awesome places and it's really not undoable if you're in a motorhome or a large van or something doing like that. Doing good. I'm doing great. Yep. Alright. Oh, what a ride. COVID really made an impact on a lot of our travel plans because we had originally intended on taking the ferry across the lake to Hall's Landing to shave off a little bit of our time in travel, but it was not operational and so we had to kind of backtrack a little ways. I think it was probably another hour out of our way in total. Regardless, this was an awesome place to go and there aren't that many places that I know of where you can take a motorhome and really 
get this primitive camping right on the water and it's not that hard to get to. Expected the Rocky Mountains to be a little rockier than this. I was thinking the same thing. I'm only human, Harry! Anybody can make a mistake. Come on! Stop being a baby! So we backtracked a tad! A tad! A tad, Lloyd! You drove almost a sixth of the way across the country in the wrong direction! Now we don't have enough money to get to Aspen. We don't have enough money to get home. We don't have enough money to eat. We don't have enough money to sleep! I <laughs> <laughs> Durango's a super awesome town. We ended up staying at the United Campgrounds of Durango, and if you're ever in Durango, I highly recommend staying there. It's really pretty, and the best part is there is actually a trolley stop at the campground, so you can just get on the trolley and take it straight into town. A lot of things still weren't open because of the COVID, but we did go to a little taco shop and get some tacos and had a really nice time in town. Then we stopped by the Red Box, picked up some DVDs and brought them back and watched them in the motorhome when all of a sudden we were interrupted by a mouse scaring the heck out of us inside the cabinets. 
We didn't know what it was because it sounded like a giant animal, but it just turned out to be a small little mouse that had grabbed some Cheez-Its and was sitting in the cabinets just munching away. To tell you the truth, I saw the mouse, but I never actually caught him. So for all I know, he could still be stowing away inside the motorhome with us. Okay, this was probably my favorite part of the trip. About seven miles down this dirt road, there is a hike you can hike to. Not gonna lie to you, not gonna beat around the bush, the hike is really, really hard on the way out. But well worth it because at the very bottom of this cliff that you hike down are some natural hot springs. And we had our own hot springs to ourselves for probably about an hour and it was just absolutely amazing. The hot springs were super hot. In fact, they were so hot that you actually had to channel water in from the creek so that you wouldn't be burning yourself. Just super relaxing. The drive itself is just gorgeous and we had a really good time. Then at the very end of that road, there's a small campground and we just camped there the night and the road in really wasn't too bad. We just had to be really careful because some of those cliffs were extremely high and that road got very narrow at certain points. So if you were to fall down there, you definitely would be really, you would probably die. And it is very, 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 very steep with no guardrails. So if you're going down that road, just be very careful. Now I would imagine had it been raining or something like that, it would have been pretty hard to get back there. So I don't think I would want to do it in such a large motor home if it was raining, but given that it was dry, it worked out perfectly.
I believe I can touch the sky I think about it every night and day Spread my wings and fly away yeah, I believe I can soar Ooh, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe These hills were the final test of the motorhome and let me tell you she surpassed every test we threw at her. We made it up that big hill, probably the biggest hill I could imagine we would ever need to take her on. She did great. Our final stop before we headed back to Denver was the sand dunes. And if you haven't been there, they are incredible. Finally made it back to our hometown, Denver, Colorado, the big city. Our motorhome road trip across the four corner states was coming to an end. And we put it back in storage until the next time.